How you doing today? We're gonna to talk about five more woodworking projects that you can sell. If you haven't seen the previous video, the top five projects that sell, I'll drop a link in the description below. You can go check that out after this video. I wanna show you some projects that actually sell so you can make money woodworking. My previous video, top five woodworking projects that sell is extremely popular as far as this channel goes. And I've gotten literally hundreds of messages from people who actually made those projects, sold them locally, and is now making money woodworking. They started a woodworking business just because of that video. That pumps me up. It makes me excited to share some more information to hopefully help you make some more money woodworking. That's the goal of this channel is to help you grow your woodworking business, to help you grow your woodworking skills. If I can put out a video like this that helps you, that's awesome. How you doing? I'm Matt with 731woodworks.com. Today, I'm gonna tell you five woodworking projects that you can build and sell locally or even online. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider hitting that subscribe button, hit that bell icon so you get notified of all the new content, hit that thumbs up, and don't forget to share this video with your friends. On this channel, we build awesome projects with basic tools. I also give out woodworking advice and videos just like this to help you make money woodworking. Without further ado, let's get started. So these projects here are some of the very first ones that I started with that helped me launch this woodworking business into something that turned into a successful venture for me. I hope that you can take these ideas, expand on them, or make the exact same ones and help grow your woodworking business yourself. That's the goal. I want you to be able to take this and make some money woodworking. Each one of these has a build video that goes along with it. They'll be linked in the description below. You can go and check each one of those out, a step-by-step -step guide on how to build each one of these. One of the very first projects that I built that I actually sold is this entryway or mudroom type bench. These are made out of a two by four, a two by six, and some one by fours. That's it. They are so simple. You don't need complicated joinery, just screws and glue, and that's all you need. You can paint these, you can stain these. They make great entryway benches because when you come into your doorway, you're able to either sit down or take your shoes off, store those underneath, and you have some storage on top if you need to put your bag up there. These are excellent little benches. They look really nice in the home. We used one for a long time here before we made our built-in hall tree. We used it right there in front of the door. Uh, we stored our shoes there. Uh, my wife put some decorations on top to make it look really nice. These are super simple. You can paint them any color you want. You can use them in the bedroom. A lot of people like to have a bench at the foot of the bed to help when you're getting dressed in the mornings, things like that. So here's the basic breakdown of the bench. You can see that it's 48 inches long, 18 inches tall. You can see all the measurements you're gonna need and the pieces you need right there. That's all you need. There is a build video linked in the description below. You can take that, build these benches. I was selling these for about $65 a piece when I first started. If lumber prices are up like they are now, to adjust that for yourself. There is no build video of this exact bench, but it's a, it's a modification on that other bench where I just made it a little taller. I made it 24 inches taller and put that section on the left that you see there where that bag is so that you actually put boots in there or backpacks, things like that, based on the same design, but it adds a little boot storage or a backpack storage uh, for your kids. Probably some of my earliest sales come from these little benches. They're like two to three foot long, just 10 degree cuts on the bottom and the top of the legs, pocket hole everything together, they're perfect. There's a build video to this as well. What's great about these benches is you can add design elements into them that actually give them a little more appeal. So like I have some that have arrows and I show you how to do those arrows in that build video. These are really neat. You can do them plain uh, with just a cross member across the bottom, no cross member across the bottom. These work good as bath caddies uh, right beside the bath. You can put your put bath items on there, soap, shampoos, things like that, extra towels. You can even use them in the living room for a basic coffee table or end table, things like that. These are multi-use benches. I've sold literally dozens of these things and they're very simple to make and they take very little time to make. I was charging 60 to $90 depending on uh, what style there was, how much detail was in them. But as you can see, you can stain these benches. You can paint these benches. Uh, you can do a combo that farmhouse style where it's stained and paint stained on the top, painted on the bottom. Those are very popular. I even started putting some design elements on the ends of the benches. Uh, you can see here I used an anchor. I just went to Walmart and they had a real thin uh, in the craft section anchor and I would just trace that out on my one by material and cut that out with the jigsaw. And then I just pocket hold it in place. That gives a really neat looking bench. You have anchors. A lot of people like to decorate with anchors. Our logo has an anchor in it which is why I use that anchor. And as you can see if you even if you have some lumber that's not perfect, it has some real knot holes and stuff in it. If you if you place those just right, it gives it a nice design element. It gives the bench a lot of character. People love that. Those are really, really big sellers for me. I've made quite a bit of money just selling these little benches. Of course, you can always take that arrow design. This is just one by material, all pocket hole together. You can see here, uh, I just made an arrow as wall decor. So you can actually take a spin off those benches and just make wall decor arrows, things like that, just to have some extra things to sell. 
It's a great way just to add some more stuff to your inventory. As you can see on the back of this wall decor arrow, it's just pocket holes and angle cut. This is a one by two with some one by eight, I believe it was, cut on like a 30 degree angle. I don't remember the exact angle. Play with it and figure it out and you'll have a nice arrow. Everything's pocket holed together. Great little wall decor ideas. My wife actually has this arrow hanging in her classroom now. The great thing about those pocket holes on the back is wall decor, it's gonna go flat against the wall. You'll never see those pocket holes once it's on the wall. Here you see that anchor bench used as a coffee table. It adds an accent, a decor accent piece for the living room. And my wife put a basket under it, put our 0731 on top with some other decor on top. It just gives it a nice design element. And that's another tip. If you're gonna to try to sell these items, you wanna take pictures sell, go ahead and stage them up like this. That's what I was having going on here. We staged this up, took pictures of it. This bench was gone in hours. Take good quality pictures. Make sure you stage that item and you're gonna make that sell easier. Here's an arrow bench done the same way. We destroyed the bottom. If you haven't seen how I distress wood, there's a link in the description below on how to distress wood. Uh, this is an arrow bench. For a long time, I made a bunch of these arrow benches. It was kind of my signature thing. Uh, I was making these little benches, selling the mess out of them. If you want something that's worked for me, and I hope that it'll work for you, try making a couple of these. You're not going to be out a lot of money uh, just buying a couple of two by material, some one by material, building one of these benches, especially some of that two by material that has a lot of knots and stuff in it. You can't really make other things out of it. But if you cut around them, place them just right, it adds a lot of character to these little benches when you stain them and then paint the base. Here's a turquoise arrow bench, just to stress. I just painted right over that raw wood, took my sander, sanded it off a little bit at a time to give it that distressed aged look. Now this was a, group, a very popular bench for me for a while. It's the same style. I just extended this bench out. I think it was actually close to a four foot bench. Same exact design, except for I did crosses on each end instead of the anchors. This is a really beautiful bench. I really, it's such a simple design, but I really enjoyed how this one looked. The cross is made out of one befores and then I ripped the one befores down into one by two, tacked those on the front. It really made a really nice looking bench. Of course, the pocket holes are exposed on the back. If you want to fill those with pocket hole plugs or just a 3 8 inch dial, glue those in and then cut them off with a flush trim saw, that'll get rid of those pocket holes for you. The anchor bench I call my Hebrew 619 bench. The, the anchor bench is based on the Hebrew 619 verse, is, which is why the anchor is in my logo. Hebrew 619, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul. Another great little project that's really fast that you can build are these little blanket ladders. These are so simple to build. You can put them together really fast and you can sell them at a decent price, kind of like entryway price into your woodworking. So if somebody buys one of these and then you have some other projects, they're not spending so much that they can't spend it on other projects as well. So if you have a couple of those benches and they come and they see the blanket ladder, if you have a booth or if you're just posting online, you can offer them some more items, kind of upsell somebody on some of your other items so that they're not out a lot of money. A lot of people like those ladders to store their blankets and quilts on for when people come over, extra company, things like that. They'll have some extra covers for people to use while they're there. These are great little simple projects. Link in the description below to that bill video. Now some of you have been around for a little bit have seen that two quick woodworking projects for beginners. These are great little sellers. The Lazy Susan and the chevrons that go on the wall. You can stain. You can paint those chevrons. Great little wall decor. Go along with that arrow that we talked about earlier. If you build a few of these, these are very simple. A lot of times if you build some of these benches and things, you'll have some scraps left over. It's a great way to use up those scraps is to build chevrons, Lazy Susans, things like that. Link in the description below to both of those. These are great little projects to build, especially using scrap. That way you use up most of the materials and make the most out of the money you've spent. Last, but certainly not least, flags. I really enjoy making flags. It's kind of an, I think it's more of an artistic thing or a creator thing. You get to create, you get to think outside the box when you make some of these flags. I know there's a lot of people out there that are making these. I've made several of these flags and they've sold well for me. Save your type in ink. Don't be commenting down there about me violating flag code. These are not real U.S. flags. This is a representation of a flag. No matter if it's a marine flag, Razorback flag, don't tread on me flag. It's a representation of a flag that I build. It is not an actual flag that I do face. Also, don't comment on negative stuff about the police or military. I'll just delete the comment and ban you from the channel. I don't got time for that stuff. This is a positive channel. Keep it positive. You know what mama said. If you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. I am a supporter of police officers. I think 99.99999% of them are great people and they're doing great work. 
It's like anything else, you're always gonna have your bad apples in any line of work, but you can't just let one spoil the bunch. You can take these flags, you can make all kinds of flags. I come up with this don't tread on me design. You've seen it in my videos. I liked it so much, I didn't sell it, I hung it in my shop. I bought most of these stencils on Amazon. If you see this deer head stencil, the duck head stencil, these are very popular in hunting areas. For you hunters out there, deer hunters, duck hunters, fishermen, you can get these stencils on Amazon. Just search deer stencil, deer head stencil, duck head stencil, things like that. You'll find those stencils on Amazon. I'll drop a link in the description below to the ones that I used. And I just put those on there, put some spray paint on there. The only thing is you have to watch for bleeding on those. You can take these blue line flags and have a little bit of fun with them because you can make blue line flags, the red line flags for firemen. You can take these and you can make them crispy and clean like this one. You can take this one and distress it, which basically I just painted and stained all this stuff and then went back with my sander and sanded this down until you start seeing that wood grain pop through. It gives it a nice distressed look. Again, I just used the stencil from Amazon, spray painted those stars on there, and then sanded them off. And a little bit of this is out of necessity because I had a lot of bleed on this one, and I just sanded that. My unions, I'm using three quarter inch sanded birch plywood, and then the stripes are just one by two material. This Pledge of Allegiance flag was a really neat build. There's a video on this build. My wife hand wrote all of the lettering on there. We made a mistake on there if you can find it. Don't worry about comment, we already know about it. This is a really neat flag. Finished it with that clear coat, gives it that nice sheen on there. This was a beautiful flag. Somebody in New York actually bought this flag, got it shipped to them, supposed to be hanging in their office somewhere in New York City. So if you know them and see it, I made that one. Here's another blue line flag version. I've rounded the edges over of all the one buys and the union, so it gives it a little more depth. I like the way that looked. And then the blue line is actually a little bit more dark than than I was using before. Not only do I support police officers, I support our military. I was never in the military, but I had the utmost respect for you. If you have been or are in the military, you get a virtual fist bump from me. I thank you for serving our country. So I made a couple of different versions of a Marine flag only because I got these orders. People asked me if I could make them, so I tried it, made them, sold them. I haven't gotten any orders for Navy, Air Force, Marines. Don't know why. As you can see, I just took my roundover bit and made a little bit of detail in this one and really made those stripes pop out. So you can see, I just took the roundover bit and lowered it, cut into it. Instead of actually rounding over, it made that ledge in there. This looks really, really neat in person. Again, I just used a stencil with a marine stencil. Spray painted that on there as you've seen in some of the other flag videos. You can go check those out, how I do that. I also have a Cricut Explorer Air. I'll put a link in the description below to that. You can actually print your own stencils. Those work fantastic. They are so much better than the kind you just lay on there and spray because you don't get all that bleed through and that overspray. So I highly recommend if you're making a lot of these, spend that 200, 250 on that Cricut. It cuts out vinyl, things like that, but it cuts out these stencils and they work fantastic. I found my 50 star template on Etsy for like $2. You just look for SVG files. Uh, you can buy all kinds of stencil files on Etsy. That's where I've bought a lot of mine. So if you really want to spice things up, if you want to kind of accentuate the flag, you can buy these little LED light strips. They're actually remote controls on Amazon for $20 to $30. Actually put those on the back of the flag and so people can plug them up and it gives a nice, really cool multicolor backlight to these flags. You see here, uh, I use different colors on this one. I just changed them over and took some different pictures of them. It just gives the flag a nice glow. It just looks really cool. If you're gonna put it in a man cave, a shop, a gym, things like that. I also made this Razorback flag. I'm not even a Razorback fan even though I'm from Arkansas. I know I got a Razorback thing on the front of my truck. It's only there because it matches the truck. I'm not a fan of this, I'm not. But I want to see if this is sale because you know, Razorback fans be buying this kind of stuff. That's what you gotta do. You gotta focus on your market. I knew this would sell if I could make it. So I did try hand etching stars to begin with. If you watch my wind rotary tool video where I tried hand etching stars, that didn't work out so well for me. It was a lot of work, but I did think that I might could hand etch this hog pattern into the union of a flag. So I just printed this hog picture on a piece of paper and then traced it onto the union of the flag. Then took my rotary tool on there and etched this in with the rotary tool. Then I painted it black, sanded it over the top of that. Black was left. And then I was able to stain this whole thing red and white it come out really really cool it takes some time to do stuff like this if you're hand etching things you have to figure that into your price if your time is valuable to you but when after i made this i posted it for sale locally thing was gone in a couple of days so if you have some big sports fans or hunters fishermen things like that in your area 
if you focus on that market and try to sell them, especially around Christmas time, Father's Day time, that sort of thing, focus in on that market to help sell some of these items. Great gifts. I know for a fact this Razorback flag was bought for a gift for a Razorback fan, so think about that when you're making your item. This marine flag was probably the neatest looking flag that I've made. I promised the person I made this for that this would be a one-off. I would not make another one like it, which is why I have not. The person that bought this is in California. It got shipped out there to them. This was a cool looking flag. I didn't even want to let it go. I bought the round Marine Corps emblem at Hobby Lobby. When I saw it, I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that, but I can do something. I bought it. Bring it home. I started thinking about flags and I was building a lot of flags at the time and I said, I think I can inset that in there. So I bought a Mousecraft circle cutting jig. Drop a link in the description below. It fits on your router. You can cut any size hole from things like four or five inches up to 36 inches. So it, it expands out quite a bit. Don't quote me on the exact size holes it can cut, but it cuts a lot. So I measured this one, the diameter of this one, took that circle cutting jig, cut a hole, inset this thing, then stenciled around it. It looks fantastic. I actually have a video on some of this build, uh, but it's mainly how to stencil without bleeding. Focus of the video. I'll drop a link in the description below. You can go check that out. But this turned out fantastic. I just glued that in there with construction adhesive and then made my flag. I think if you made some other similar to this, Hobby Lobby has some of these like this that have Air Force, Army, Navy. If you're in a military town or close to a military town, stuff like this, military focus, you're gonna sell the mess out of it. Be a good seller for you. I wanna offer you one more bonus item. I know I told you five more projects, but one more can never hurt if you're making some money. So these are not my design. They're J Bates. You've heard me talk about these things tons of times. The very first project that I built to sell, it sold pretty quick. These are great springtime projects because people are looking, when you walk into Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, any of those big box stores or retail chains, springtime, what do you see? Outdoor furniture, outdoor tables, the big canopies. They're trying to sell that stuff at a specific time of year. You rarely, you hardly ever see it, if ever, during this fall and winter months. So when it's getting close to spring, this is a good project to build. So I built both the chair set with the table as well as an extended version. You just extend it out in bench form and make a bench out of it. So I built these. We actually staged these up. That's key. Remember to stage these products if you're supposed to sell online. People want to see them staged, see them in use so they can picture it in their mind exactly what they're going to use this for. So my wife actually staged this up, took a rug out of our house, put it in the garage. This is before the garage was turned into the wood shop. That's how early on this was. She put that rug down, put some blankets in these things put some books on those chairs she put a pillow in that chair that looks so inviting it looks like i could put that on my port on my deck and really love that i'll drop a link in the description below to jay bates to this video of this build these are very simple i was a beginner woodworker and was able to build those and it looks impressive but they're really not that hard i built those with a drill and a circular saw so all of these projects are approachable you see the bench she staged this for me as well put it in the flower bed or right in front of a bush gives it a good background put some pillows on there the books again some coffee cups on that little side table you take and you stage that she even got in miss 731 herself got in on this one and and help, help me stage it. She sat there drinking a cup of coffee, reading a book, let me take a picture of that. That puts in people's minds, this is what I can do with that. I can take this item, put it on my porch, and that's a good place for me to read. I can put that on my deck, and that's a good place for me to read. So you could take these items like this. These are very, very simple, but they sell. These things sell in the springtime. So if this, you're looking for a springtime woodworking project, here you go. Go check out that video. You can paint these, you can stain these. If they're going outside and you stain them, use some spar urethane on them, That'll help seal them for the outdoor element. So I actually gave you six woodworking projects that could sell. I hope you can take this information, build these items to help grow your woodworking business. This gives you six more things you can build on. Five of them are mine, one is Jay Bates. I just keep giving Jay Bates the credit because he's why I started woodworking. And I've gotten tons of response from you guys saying, I'm why you started woodworking. And I can't tell you how humbling that is and how awesome it is that you're able to take this stuff and make money with it or to grow your woodworking skills. That is the goal of this channel is to help you grow in your woodworking, to let you know that you can do it. Get out there and build that stuff. Get out there and make some sawdust. I've got some other videos on this channel that's going to help you in your woodworking business. If you check the description below, there's going to be a playlist on make money woodworking. In that playlist, there's how to sell your woodworking both locally online, how to sell woodworking successfully on Etsy. There's a video called three ways to price your woodworking that goes all through how to price your woodworking projects. And then finally, if you're curious on what I've priced any of the projects on this channel, there's a video that shows you exactly what I've priced the projects that are on this channel. You can go watch that. If you have any questions at all, 
feel free to contact me on social media, 731 Woodworks on Instagram, Facebook, or you can go to the website, 731woodworks.com, and there's a contact me button down there. Send me a contact information. I'll be glad to help you in any way that I can. If you click that box up there, you can watch the original five woodworking projects that sell video. It has five more ideas for you to grow your woodworking business, or you can click this one right here. It's another one of my favorites. If you click one of those other boxes, you get that virtual fist bump. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Click the notification bell so you get notified of all the new content we've got coming. I'll see you in the next one. Hey, do me a favor, click that box, will you?